Welcome, everyone. Welcome once again to the October 13th, 2011 edition, episode number 87 of the Still Real Touch Show. I am the champ, Jeff Beck. I am from the Wheelhouse Radio program. And you can download this show every week at wheelhouseradio.com and wrestlechat.net. Of course, also at twfnews.com, camelclutchblog.com. I am one half of the wrestling podcast, Tag Team Champions of the World. I am the champ, Jeff Beck. And ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and welcome back behind the mic. It's almost been a month since the last time he's been on the show. Welcome back, editor-in-chief of camelclutchblog.com, host of Pro Wrestling Radio, the one and only Eric Argillo. Eric, welcome back, my friend. Jeff, thank you very much. Uh, happy to be back. And uh, I promise no walkouts uh, today on the uh, radio show. Uh, you have my full vote of confidence. Oof. And uh, I am excited to be back. Oh, thank God for that, because I do not want uh, us to be occupying the podcast. I don't know how we would do that. Yeah, um, I don't know how we would do that either. What do we just walk away from our microphone? I guess we just walk away and it'd just be a silent one hour podcast. Maybe we'll fill it up with some Michael Bolton music. I don't know how there we would do go. such. Um, lots to talk about in today's show. We're actually going to preview and predict. Um, this is a first. We've done this. We haven't done this in a while. A TNA pay-per-view. Since it's Bound for Glory, it's their WrestleMania. We're going to preview and predict uh, Bound for Glory in a little bit. We're going to talk about Brock oh, Lesnar. I'm really walking out. Yeah, okay, there we go. The show is now over after three minutes. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Brock Lesnar being named to uh, WWE 12. Um, I know Eric's going to gloat a little bit about that one. And uh, if this is the start of the return of Brock Lesnar, possibly on WWE television. Uh, we're going to give our thoughts on Mark Henry uh, as of late. Uh, why the WWE continues to bury Jim Ross in Oklahoma. Uh, we're going to wonder if or if Vince McMahon is still a genius, uh, our good friend Luke Cox on WWE television and why they need to sign him. But we start off this week's show, Eric. I'm just going to put it to you this way. What the hell happened on Monday night? Uh, uh, at the Lions, uh, they, they did it at home against the Bears. Oh, you're talking about the wrestling show. Yeah, yeah. You know what I, I was going to say is there really wasn't something for me to watch. The, bear, uh, the Lions were blowing out the Bears, like you just said. Uh, yeah. The ALCS at the time. Um, the Rangers were beating the, um, or no, the Brewers were beat, uh, the Cardinals were beating the Brewers in the NLCS. The ALCS was over, so there really wasn't much to watch. My TV was locked into, uh, what I was thinking was going to be a different Raw and something that was going to be fun, something new. Um, and, and I, I at the end of the show, Eric, I, I was like, what the hell did I just watch? Am I, am I alone on this, uh, this thought process? You know, it's funny, this whole uh, Triple H thing, because I'll admit it, Jeff, that um, the week before, obviously, you know, I wasn't here last week, so so we didn't really get a chance to discuss it. But um, the week before, when they did the actual walkout angle, I loved it. And I was in uh, a huge minority because uh, all over the, the social media world and the blogosphere, um, you know, the uh, Internet wrestling community, so to speak, uh, they, they were hating that angle. And I definitely saw their points. Um, you know, the big criticism was that Triple H buried a lot of the talent or, or just the, uh, uh, whoever booked the uh, angle buried a lot of the talent. It didn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, you know, I, I totally got that. But I just loved that that moment at, at the end of Raw last week when they all walked out and it was silent. I thought it was great. I thought it was a great moment. Uh, fast forward, I was excited. I'll admit it. I was really excited to see where they were going to go with this. And, uh, you know, I, I knew that I was fighting my way up because, uh, again, a lot of people not so keen on the angle. But, okay, whatever. And, man, you know, it just uh, it just did a nosedive in a hurry. And you and I, we're not the only ones that felt that way because you look at the ratings pattern, um, the patterns for uh, this past Raw, and it opened up with a real strong rating, which shocked me, Jeff. It opened up with a 3.2, which uh, in the midst of a baseball playoff game and uh, I would say the biggest Monday night football game of the season, I thought was super impressive. So I think a lot of people were in my camp. They really liked it, and they wanted to see where it was going to go next. But, man, you know, in, in just a couple of minutes – uh, Triple H did um, a better job than anybody has in months of burying the entire roster. And, you know, it's, it, it's easy to blame him, but he's not the writer and he doesn't have uh, final approval. So, uh, you know, I'll say it was Vince McMahon. I'll say it was a creative team, but they did a tremendous job of burying the locker room. You know, when Triple H went out there 
and he mocked them for saying it was dangerous and, and, and this and that. He was right. He was absolutely right with everything he said. And for anybody that's watched wrestling, um, I would say for more than just a couple of months, uh, you know, we've seen crazier times and crazier incidents on, on WWE television than what we've seen uh, over the last couple of weeks. That's that's really, um, really where they dropped the ball on this thing. Uh, well, they dropped the ball on a lot of places, so I shouldn't say that. But where they really dropped the ball is they never really made it crazy enough um, to provoke something like that. And then you have Vince McMahon, who, uh, from what we were told, doesn't even work here, walking out and, 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 and doing this angle. Then you have John Laurinaitis, um, who, who just, uh, you know, can't, can't put a sentence together that you can understand on television now is the, the heel GM. Uh, I mean, this thing just nosedived uh, in a hurry. And, you know, I know, Jeff, you talked a lot about CM Punk last week about him not being the guy. And, uh, you know, you and I, we emailed, we had correspondence and emails about your blog, a fantastic blog you wrote on my site on the matter. But, you know, he's another guy that was just totally killed this past Monday night on Raw, whereas... You know, you follow what he wrote on Twitter last week about why he wasn't out there. And you know what? You thought to yourself, at least I did. Wow, it makes a lot of sense. But then he comes out there and he's he's begging Triple H to wear his suit jacket like some kind of jackass uh, sitting at, at ringside. And of all people in Triple H's corner, it, it's him. And then you, you fast forward to the end of the show and now they're tag partners. I mean, this whole thing uh, really makes um, TNA wrestling uh, the booking of TNA wrestling looked like something out of Bill Watts Mid South. Yeah, uh, really, really confusing. Raw. Um, I, let's 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 kind of break this down a little bit here. I, you mentioned before the whole CM Punk stuff. Um, maybe people would say I, I think he's kind of been off the radar the last way before a month ago. But the fans that were still sticking on to this whole thing that Punk has developed since his promo on June 26th um, or June 27th, whatever the case may be. Um, you you look at what's been going on, and and he was such a hot talent. People were really interested in what he was going to do or say next, and then he's just kind of lost steam over time here. And, and you mentioned before, here he is, uh, leading up to all of this SummerSlam time and afterwards, Night of Champions. He's feuding with Triple H. Whether they eventually they got in the ring, it wasn't supposed to be the ev end of eventual uh, end result there, but they've been feuding with one another. It was going to lead to something. People said it would lead to a Survivor Series match, maybe something at Royal Rumble. Eric even wanted to see it at WrestleMania 28. Yeah. That's not going to happen now. Um, now they're chummy. They're buddy-buddy. They're tag partners. That's thrown out the window. One. Two. I have never heard, up until this show, uh, Triple H referred to as the Raw GM. All of a sudden, he's the general manager of Raw. I could have sworn he was the chief operating op officer, and he was on both shows. But here he is the first time being um, named the Raw GM. The on anonymous Raw GM thing, the computer out the window, out the door for a while. You know, that was something that would gain a lot of heat, especially for Michael Cole. That's no longer, you know, that's gone. And Triple H this whole time was the Raw GM, I guess, the last couple of weeks since he became the COO. Uh, and now Johnny Ace, uh, John Laronitis, is now the new raw gm temporarily interim uh, vince mcmahon who was supposedly i thought let go of his duties but still listed as the chairman of the wwe and in talks with the board of directors um removes triple h as the position of raw gm but he's still the coo um that right there eric and this isn't breaking down i guess that's mainly the the storylines that were broken down from the show and we could talk about the walkout and the occupy raw after this um but that right there is, is that not extremely confusing and just everything you've built up, hey, let's just toss it out the window? This sounds like to me, Eric, if I'm a person that works for WWE or I'm a writer, this was rewritten uh, a couple times, maybe, you know, eight, nine, ten times before they got a product on paper that Vince McMahon liked. This show um, really made no sense, whatever. The booking was Vince Russo-ish, and like you said, it made TNA look great. But that right there, those, those couple storylines I just mentioned – I mean, what was the point of building it up if you were going to tear it down in one episode? You know, um, two points. Um, and, and one, you know, you, you brought up Vince Russo-ish, and uh, I want to get back to what you were saying. But if you look at Bound for Glory, and I don't want to jump ahead here, Jeff, but if you look at Bound for Glory and you look at the two main programs at Bound for Glory, Stinkin' Hogan and uh, Bobby Roode and Kurt Angle. Now, take the fact that, that, that Sting and Hogan, they're probably going to have a horrible – 
uh, match or fight, as as Hogan uh, likes to say. Um, but take take that out of the equation um, for a second, which is kind of hard to do. But uh, bear with me for a second. But you look at the way those two programs right now, the two biggest programs going on in the company right now, because Balfour Glory is their, their WrestleMania. So you would say they're the two biggest programs of the year. You look at the way that those two angles have been booked and they have been booked better than anything in recent memory in the WWE. 